we'll be moving into a brand new episode of Star Trek Lower Deck Season 2. Spoilers ahead as we jump into our weekly review, you have been warned. Hello everyone, my name's Captain Jack and welcome to Trek Central. Let's get right into it. Episode 6 is titled The Spy Humongous and features our Lower Decks crew working on Anomaly Consolidation Day on board the Cerritos as usual. Meanwhile, Captain Janeway, I mean Captain Freeman, is dealing with peace attempts on the Pac-Led homeworld, aka Pac-Led planet. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Star Trek universe. Once again, we're greeted with a new Star Trek Lower Decks episode. I can safely say that episode 6 was really entertaining, but not super exciting like other episodes we've seen in season 2 so far. Either way though, I'm glad to say that I found it really fun to watch. Let's talk some more about the actual plot of this episode. The USS Cerritos is sent to deal with the pac a species introduced in Star Trek The Next Generation and reintroduced as the antagonist in the Lower Decks Season 1 final. I have to say, I absolutely love how Lower Decks is making use of the pac as this constant villain, or shall I say rather general annoyance in the show. While the series of Lower Decks has unique stories each episode, compared to the serialised writing of other recent Star Trek series, it's still cool and interesting to carry the pac threat over and use it as a constant story component. Dare I say, it's almost back to classic Trek writing, which is a refreshing term for some to hear. I think the pac crisis is going to be an overarching story of Star Trek Lower Decks. The series showrunner, Mike McGann, and the writers of Lower Decks clearly love using them, and to be honest, they kinda are funny. Even if they had some sort of political revolution movement this week. I'm sure I'll go back to normal next week, in a manner of speaking. We are treated to the running joke of pac not being able to identify any Federation starship or captain. Given they presume the Cerritos is once again the Enterprise, plus they mistake Captain Freeman for Captain Janeway of the USS Voyager. During the orbit scenes, we see the pac starships, which are kit bashes of other Star Trek vessels. Looking at the pictures on screen right now, let us know what ships you think are featured in the pac ships. Having a prisoner escape to the Cerritos was something I did not see happening in this episode. But of course in reality, it's a pac spy. I feel like this is a reference back to a specific Star Trek episode, but I can't quite put my finger on it. And of course, the chase parts of this episode are a fact of bluff, as the pac of course managed to eject himself from the ship out of an airlock that he mistook for a bathroom. The additional plot of this episode revolves around with and links with Freeman's diplomatic mission, in which she and Shaxx witness a revolution on the planet as we previously mentioned. How both of them managed to outsmart the pac is no great surprise really. Whether we'll be seeing more of the pac again is a likely bet I'm personally for, given that Captain Freeman and Shax managed to outsmart the pac into revealing they're trying to smuggle a Ruvian bomb onto Earth in an attempt to deal a crippling blow to the Federation. Thinking about it, do we have a reason for why the pac are actually attacking Starfleet and the Federation in the first place? We do know from this episode that they're attacking Federation shipping lines and trade routes, so that's something to go off of I guess. There's a pattern to the pac attacks on these outposts. They're after Ruvian ore. Uh, it's, uh, sorry, what ore? Veruvian. Contains minerals which become volatile at high vibratory frequencies. Ain't weaponizing Veruvian ore a bit above the pac grade level. Way above. Which is why Starfleet Command believes there may be another player involved. They'll lead us right to their puppet master. And that's when we cut the strings. Our main plot for the Lower Deckers this week is a normally consolidation day, which apparently involves running around and cleaning up all the magic and weird Trek crap that the bridge crew officers picked up on their travels. Naturally, most of this stuff is extremely harmful and toxic to the Lower Deckers, and every time they clean something up, it backfires, causing them to find a typical Star Trek solution to fixing it, such as apparently firing a phaser, because of course, why not? The interesting moment for me was the confrontation between Tendi and Mariner. As a character, Ensign Tendi is always happy and lucky in anything she does, which can get rather tedious to her friends as well as the viewers, apparently. Mariner's outburst explains frustration with Tendi's happy attitude towards work all the time, something we can likely all relate to. Work is work. It can sometimes be fun, but typically it's not fun and rather tedious, especially if it's a job you're not really interested in, such as cleaning up other people's trash. Especially trash that converts you into monsters. Tendi finds out this at first hand, when getting converted into some sort of scorpion-like bug, with her then terrorising the Cerritos lower decks and smashing up the cafeteria room. I did personally like the note of her knocking out Commander Ransom and Lieutenant Kayshon as they're trying to search for the pac spy. Introducing the wannabe captain officers as the Red Shirts was a funny touch. Of course, historically in Star Trek, the running joke is that the Red Shirts always died in the original series. The fact these guys refer themselves as Red Shirts is kind of ironic. 
These officers are people we've seen in the background before. Ensign Jennifer and Ensign Casey. And what is fun is one of these officers, or one of these senior officers, is actually Kazinti. An interesting species in the Star Trek universe and one of our favourites here on the Trek Central channel. The species themselves are aggressive, cat-like humanoids and natives to the Alpha Quadrant. According to Star Trek The Animated Series, the Kazinti had fought four wars with humankind prior to 2269 and managed to lose all of them. Well done guys. It's cool that by 2381 a Kazinti was serving in Starfleet and on board the USS Cerritos. Even attempt to climb the Starfleet ranks with the red shirts on board the ship. Now, Commander Dorm of the Trek Central team made a note of me mentioning this. But being with Kazinti's posture makes him look a bit like the Kazinti telepath. So if any of you understand that reference, good luck. And some Boimler's makeover makes him stand out. And I mean, wow. It's actually a look I could see Captain Boimler having in the future. Part of me wants to think the idea of a captain being ripped and built like a brick shithouse is a reference to the IDW comic books where we see Captain Jean-Luc Picard ripped and leading the Mirror Universe forces. The inspiring speech that Ensign Boimler gave initially starts off in typical Boimler fashion of being terrible, but eventually turns into a really good Star Trek-esque inspiring speech. Also, the transforming background into a Galaxy-class bridge setup looks fantastic. The funny moment being the red shirts doing nothing of value when the Tendi situation kicks off. Instead of actually helping, they stand there giving speeches to try and inspire the crew, until Boimler points out the obvious that they are the freaking crew not the captain of the vessel and actually does something rather useful. The red shirts wanting to know all the details about Captain Riker is hilarious because apparently the only critical detail is he's always cleaning his trombone. Whether it's a euphemism, we'll never know. We do know Riker is very proud of his trombone though. Eventually Ensign Casey is given the acting captain status on the bridge of the Cerritos. But in typical lower decks fashion as per usual, he has that for about 30 seconds before Shatz comes in and takes over. A short little parade it seems. Now overall this was once again an enjoyable episode of Star Trek Lower Decks. The A-plot works surprisingly well, which also fits with the B-plot of this episode. Trying to upgrade Ensign Boimler to be more Captain material worked well, but also presented one of those underlying starting messages of being your own person. The message here, if we're interpreting correctly, is while it's good to be inspired by those above and around you, you still need to forge your own path and essentially be your own person. Essentially, the message of Boimler and the other red shirts is that while Janeway, Picard and Riker are all super cool captains and senior officers, you still need to be your own unique person at the end of the day. The ending scene in this episode is a reference to Star Trek with Next Generation episode Skin of Evil of Armus, a being of extreme hate. Apparently prank calling him and reminding him how he's alone is a critical low blow. Armus is a being who murdered Tasha Yar in the Next Alan, Generation. What are we gonna do? Prank call Armus? <laughs> Come and find us. We're touching your stuff. What stuff? Stop that! I am a skin of evil. More like a puddle of. <laughs> Damn you! Don't forget that if you want to watch Star Trek Lower Decks, then you can catch it every Thursday on Paramount Plus for US viewers and CTV Sci Fi Crave for Canadian viewers. If you're international, then Amazon Prime is your destination. That's our weekly review of Star Trek Lower Decks. Don't forget to let us know your thoughts and opinions via the comment section below. Because if you're talking about Star Trek, then we want to hear about it. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from myself and the team here at Trek Central. You can of course follow us on social media, join our community Discord server, or visit our website for the latest news. For now, I've been Captain Jack, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Live long and prosper my friends, goodbye.